So I've been needing a coat rack and a shoe rack and mask rack, I guess now, for inside the door. All the hand washing and airlock stuff, I just want to be able to, you know, drop all my gear right inside the door, wash up, and then, you know, be inside. So, went down to the shop and I found some one and a quarter by one and a quarter, it was in the scrap bin, as well as some uh, one and a quarter box tube. I think the sidewall on this is about 14 gauge. Welder's probably running a little hot right now. Um, tacking it together which I kind of think hot tacks are a little better I uh, decided to just put together a little box frame like this a couple little spreaders at the top and basically just a simple box frame uh, making sure here to grind down the tacks before I flip it over otherwise they're gonna sit proud and make it a uh, sort of boat out when you uh, clamp to the table on the other side Never ever set your grinder upright. Okay, flip it over, square it up real good, which requires a lot of tapping. Go get a hammer. Oh no, wait. Oh, that's a good idea. Here's the hammer finally. Alright, so we're gonna just tack these all together. A couple tacks on each side of each corner. Now we're laying great big caterpillars across the joints. All these welds are gonna be ground down so they flush, so having the welder set up just a tiny bit cold helps it sit proud and prevent undercut on the weld edges. Yeah, it means my welds aren't full thickness, full depth of penetration, but it's holding up hoodies. Right, so we're over here we've got a simple miter on the angle iron. We've got it clamped down with the one, two, three clamp so that the clamp isn't sitting on the revving. We've got it held pretty flat for the true. Using spot technique on the edge so that I'll build up a good edge so that when I sand it down I can get a nice proud corner as opposed to really round it down. Once again, really using those one, two, three clamps, dig a bevel, fill it up, grind it back down, and sand it. So, this angle had a really tenacious mill scale. I tried using it originally 80 grit on the sander, it did nothing as you can tell. I keep checking the pad to see if it's still there. Uh, ended up having to get some 60 grit and also used a 60 grit flap disc as well. Yeah, clean off the tip on the table. Nobody saw that. So, uh, putting it together in three dimensions now. I've got the clamps for the angle iron built up, uh, holding it pretty square, but this is just the first couple welds intact, so it's not totally true in terms of the back being 90 degrees to the sides. Here I've made a little 1-2-3 clamp out of my 1-2-3 block. Big random chunk of steel on a clamp. Reach out across it. I can't flip it around and use the other side of the table because only this side of our table is flat, so no serious questions about this one. And boy, that's welding like crap. Maybe I should think about cleaning the tip. Probably. Probably work a little better once I clean that tip out. There we go. There's a weld. Right, we're grinding down and sanding the welds. So this is the part that's going to be right at eye level. So I wanted this to look about as good as it gets on the whole thing. Um, not that I'm cheating, but always make the part that you look at look the best. So now we're putting a bottom brace, putting an angle iron kick plate onto here so that we can get a lot more torsional stability across it. Right now I think I'm tack welding that clamp to the metal, which is, yeah, that's a good clamp.
That's some porosity you're gonna have to dig out. Cut to, oh hey, there's a well, but looks like I know what I'm doing. Alright, so before I put in the final brace, I really need to square it up into the three dimensions, so lots of tapping, lots of adjusting. Uh, right behind the camera, I've got a ratchet strap pulling it diagonally across the table to hold it a little bit more true. Pack, adjust, a little bit of false work involved. I decided I wanted some fancy hooks for the hoodies, and of course the wrong chuck was on the lathe, so call it chuck job. Break the corners, sand it down, face the corners, sand it down, spin it out a little, face it down, sand it. Knock the edge off there to give the tap a fighting chance. And there we go. Let's use that die to throw some threads on the end of that. Bust out the oxycellin rig and put some heat on those so that I can bend the hooks down. Burn off that cutting oil. Probably should have cleaned that off. Bleed out the oxycellin rig safely because you're not a jerk. I really decided that I was going to just notch the back of these sides so that it would sit flat. And we're in dead tree carcass time. I'm going to be joining these two pieces together, so just matching the two chunks together and not really you know, measuring at this point. Biscuit time. Making a couple quick biscuits going. Put a bunch of glue on them. Wipe it off. Wrap it down. Don't forget to film linseed oil in the wood. Now we're linseed oiling the metal. Put a nice good coat of oil on there. Of course the wood had to sit quite a bit longer to finish. Go through match drill with the pilot drills to the wood, and then open up to the final drill size on all sides and fight those countersinks could be flush. And we're home. Take get home, get to the hoodie, the mask, the keys, 